happen. What I would like to show you is what happens in the front and how DBSync is set up, how you can get started, and much beyond standard Salesforce QuickBooks uh, where you can take this uh, platform and do some really interesting things. Uh, so I'll do a, a quick product walkthrough and then also show how to interact with databases and other things. Now we have been doing Salesforce QuickBooks for three, four years now. We are kind of the leading provider. So today's webinar is kind of special because we are trying to show what you can go do beyond Salesforce and QuickBooks and use databases. As uh, recently we had received a lot of uh, requests and we have done so many projects integrating with e-commerce or building data warehouses, uh, just extending beyond the standard Salesforce QuickBooks paradigm into multiple other things. So today uh, we'll look at multiple of these. Before I do that, what I want to do is um, do a quick poll and uh, to understand what applications do you all use. So you should receive a poll on on your desktop. If you can just mark what are you interested in so that would, you know, we can plan our talk going forward. Give it a few minutes. Looks like most of you have voted. And again, a lot of, I mean, pretty much everyone is looking for Salesforce and QuickBooks. Uh, I see some wanting databases, some wanting uh, to build data warehouses, and few are others. Uh, if you can just put in your comments of what other applications you're looking for, then towards the end of, uh, once we are done with this, demo, we can start to talk about what can we do to help you with it. So good. Um, let's get started with that. How to get started with DB Sync. If you have not already signed up with us, if you can go to www.mydbsync.com. Let me close this. Once you log in, logged in. Let me log out. Once you log in and go to our home page, uh, you have the product section. Click on the product section. You'll see all the adapters that we support, um, and we can assist with. What does the platform do? It's pretty straightforward. We do offer both on-demand and on-premise. Uh, we have a built-in process library that you can pick and choose and quickly get started. We'll show you that. Uh, and we have a whole series of adapters that we build and sell. If you have not already registered, you should register. That will give you a tr free trial of our application. And when you're registering it, make sure that you select the right adapters because we pre-install these two adapters into your environment for 30 days so you can experiment, try it out before you buy. Once you, if you want a third adapter, just let us know. Let uh, Sumit know from our sales team, and we'll be more than happy to get you started. Once you register, you'll get a username password, and you can log in. Once you log in, you end up into your home page and shows how you, know, you pretty much add adapters to process to integrate to run the integration. Uh, it does have some videos built in, and you can watch these videos and then manage licenses and other things. Uh, we do have a built-in library that you can launch, uh, use. Let's launch the console. Console is the main area where you set up your integration. So here's a profile section. Profile can be thought of as uh, either app-to-app -app integration or functional integration. 
uh, defining your business processes. In this screen, you'll see a much more app to app, you know, QB to SQL Server, Great Plains, or Intact. What you could also define as CRM to accounting or HR uh, or e-commerce. You, you can define it as you want, and you can have as many as you want. There's no restrictions in that platform. A quick walkthrough of the different tabs on the top. Uh, that's the profile section. We have a built-in scheduler. So as you are building these configurations, so you can schedule it to run on a periodic basis. And QuickBooks, you run it with QuickBooks Web Connector, but in databases or Salesforce, you might want to put in schedule run every five minutes, 15 minutes, however you want. And then we have these process templates that I was talking about. And the library is built in, and it has a whole series of pre-built configurations that you can pick and choose and get started in minutes. Uh, once it's installed, the demo that you saw is a Salesforce to QuickBooks uh, setup or template. You'll see a quick start as well as manage. The difference between these two is this is the quick start is kind of hiding all the complexities that is in setting up this integration. So let's go ahead and start this and show you what it looks like. It's very much a wizard-like walkthrough. You have a Salesforce. You put in your username and password. I need to validate first. It's validated. You have the QuickBooks. Once you set up, you can point it to a QuickBooks file. If you don't point it, it would pick up the default QuickBooks file that is open. The same setup, you can actually copy this template multiple times and connect to multiple QuickBooks if you want. Or you can have a, you can do a couple of combinations of it. So it's pretty straightforward. There's instructions right below it on how to do it. And then after that, you pretty much walk through you can pretty much walk through many other uh, setups and the one that you would need the most is Opportunity to invoice. So you have opportunities in CRM and needs to get over. And we have made it pretty easy. So as you're thinking through your business process, uh, for example, if you didn't want to create a job, you would uncheck this. And accordingly, you can control what all integrations need to happen. And then you can edit map, and we'll go into in depth in it if you may. There's lots of uh, these templates pre-built and documented for you to start using it. So this is pretty common for you to get started once you select the template. Now what does it look behind the scene? And this is the built-in ID. The ID comes along with the product for enterprise users and uh, uh, it doesn't have for professional but for enterprise. And this gives you capability to create integrations with custom Salesforce object or some things that is not in the template and you want to extend it. You, you know, the opportunity to invoice this is account receivable side. Do you want to do account payable if you want to have inventory things? You can easily extend it. Now what it looks behind the scene is, uh, it might you know, scare some of you, but this is how we can model it. Uh, you can see the same screen is actually in depth of all these processes that happen. And most of them are drag and drop and you can create it. By default, you, you have account sync, you have product to item, uh, you have recurring uh, invoice and estimate, we have solution for those, we have credit memo templates. As you can see, there's lots of them uh, that are built in and each one of them are certainly configurable. And you can see here's opportunity, we read opportunity, and we split that information into so many different places in QuickBooks so that 
customers get automatically created, your products get automatically created, um, you know, the invoices get generated, and any other uh, information that you want to set it up. Uh, we also have a feedback loop and error handling built in. So we have maps for success as well as error. So if there are problems in integration, we push that information back into Salesforce uh, so that you can run reports and do workflows and things like that. So this is what is um, you know, Salesforce QuickBooks. Uh, some of you mentioned you wanted to build integrations with databases or many would want to export data from Salesforce to QuickBooks. So here's another template. It will where you know, Salesforce extracted into SQL Server. In this case, you set up Salesforce with your username password. You set up your quick, uh, SQL Server and point to it. And you define your process. Okay. So you start, you do a customer import into your database and end. And here you run in Salesforce this particular query, which is part of the circle, and then you write to your database on a customer object. And then you have a mapping in between these two. There it is. So you have in my database I have three columns. And this is all the information in the query from Salesforce. And this is how I can map it. The mapping uh, capabilities is quite extensive. We have Excel-like formulas for folks who do not want to delve into complicated coding. You can pick and choose any of these. Uh, we have management of uh, straight structures as well as loops. We'll go through that example. Again, loops are important if you are querying one object and dumping it into an invoice as uh, in QuickBooks or other subsystems. Very, very common in e-commerce based application integration with uh, either with Salesforce or QuickBooks. We'll go through one of those examples right now. So mapping is pretty straightforward. If you feel that you can't map here, uh, we can certainly write some Java code and you can with really complex logics. We do have in-memory sessions that you can manage. Uh, you have memory lookups and mem tables. These are very useful if you're looking at cross-join objects 